Pleasant good evening to you and welcome to Encounter, a program that is brought to you under the auspices of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies. Wherever you are viewing us tonight, we are happy that you are joining us and uh, we hope that you had a very good productive day today. I know that the students have gone back to school um, after their midterm break and uh, teachers are back in school so we hope that the first day today has been rather productive for you we have had quite some rain over the, over the last weekend um, we heard of incidents of landslides and some persons may have had slight damage to their homes and we do keep you in prayer we hope and pray that things would have worked out by now um, and that we are glad that for the rains but we are also glad that they have passed so that persons can recuperate and um, move on, move on with their lives. It is also a very important week right across St. Vincent and the Grenadines and perhaps the world. Mm -hmm. um, I know tomorrow, Tuesday, is the American elections. And for us here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, our elections will be on Thursday. And we are hoping here in Encounter that by now you would have been guided based on the series that we have been doing in terms of how you're going to mark your X, and we really hope that once you're 18 and over you have been registered already and that you are ready to go and vote so we hope that you have been challenged and you have been guided by this program over the last few weeks as we have been dealing with the political issue um I'm, as usual i'm joined tonight by our two bishops i am joined by our general bishop Bishop Sonny Williams, and I'm also joined by our presiding bishop, um, Bishop Stephen Oliver. So I will ask our general bishop to greet you, and then we'll go to our presiding bishop. All right, so good evening. And um, I want to remember the, the folks in the Lomans Camden Park area, um, and my own little village, Maho village. I um, hope you're doing Hope you're doing well and let me send condolences to the sandys um, i know that um, um janet one of your daughters passed away and um, so my my deepest condolences to the family in the time of you know the loss of your very young daughter and we pray that god will grant you the strength and the hope that you so need during this time of your bereavement. And um, like what Reverend um, Komabash said, I want to wish this nation the best. I want to wish this nation the government that uh, reflects the will of God. And I hope that you will be a part to release God's will here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I am hoping that Elections will be free and fair. And that after the announcement next Thursday, that the election will be so open and free and fair that there will be no need for any challenge. Whoever wins, we all will support. And the party that would not have done that well to gain the confidence of the people would concede um and we hope that will be that smooth Amen. so god bless um bishop oliver yes well great evening to you and we give god thanks and i always count it a privilege regardless of pandemic protocols dengue fever we still have a lot to give god thanks for Amen. and uh, you know we we do that um, also want to say hello to those in the Grenadines. Um, uh, trust that you are really enjoying this weather because sometimes we pray and ask God to stop it in St. Vincent, but you cannot pray that prayer <laughs> in the Grenadines. You know, that, that was it. That's the reality. You need the rain. And so, you know, I yeah. trust that you are thankful and all your tanks are just overflowing with water want to say hello to those on the Grenada side, um, Karaku, certain parts of Grenada, and also St. Lucia. It's great that you are viewing us. And throughout St. Vincent, 
Also, I want to put my bit in. Um, I've been saying to the church, gentlemen, that on Thursday, we are going to the polls. And on Wednesday night in our prayer meeting, we, it's going to be a matter of prayer. And we have asked all our members to continue praying, not just on Wednesday evening, but we want to continue praying for this election. Um, also, we mentioned that after the election, whoever, whoever um, we have voted in, uh, that we will give full support and we will certainly move forward as a nation. Also, I want to say this to us as citizens. We have spoken about it um, extensively. It's your duty mm -hmm. to go out and vote. Let us stop. I know some of us in the Christian arena say, well, God already knows who is going to be there, so I don't have to do anything. It's a process, and God has designed this. He has sanctioned it so that you and I can use it to put someone inside there. So I am pleading with you, let us not take this lightly. The only problem, gentlemen, is that sometimes I think I'm wise by leaving my home 6 o'clock and lining up by the polling station only to discover a hundred other persons <laughs> thought the same way and sometimes you say well, okay i'll wait till lunchtime the line may um, ease up and so forth but you discover many more thinking the same way so it's better you walk with your little snack bag put your snacks in there and um, your umbrella and so forth and just stand up like everybody else and wait until your turn so let's go out there do what we have to do and uh, let God's will prevail. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay, so we're in the final um, point, sir, and that is servant leadership. And this is interesting. The first time I heard about it, um, it is not something new, but the concept, I'm told that by Robert K. Greenleaf, he first coined the phrase um, servant leadership in his 1970 essay. All right, um, but you look at even the Bible and you realize this has been around a long time. But he was given credit for, you know, calling it, as some would say, servant leadership. And what it's all about, it's our focus on others. So what we do, we are trying to help others, build others. You know, it's, it's, it's a sort of selfless approach in leadership. Now, a lot of people don't like it um, because when you think of it, we, we struggle a lot with self. You know, a lot of times we focus on ourselves and we want everything for ourselves and not for others. And when you think of it, gentlemen, politicians have to think like that. It's all about the people because people elected you um, into this office and we know uh, we have mentioned it before with regards to the will of God, but you were elected there and you have to serve the people. But at times it is not like that. And so it's on that basis we are going to look at this and we're going to talk some more about servant leadership. All right. All right. Bishop, yeah. okay. All right. Um, well, so add what you to what you you started off by saying, um, Bishop. Um, servanthood really is not about position or skill, but it's, it's about the attitude. And I think that's one of the ways we want to start off this evening. It's about the attitude that we're hoping that all of our representatives will have. Um, saying that doesn't necessarily mean they, they mustn't be people who have, who have skill. Mm -hmm. And in the, it's not saying that if they're in the position, the position is not important. But I think what is more important for us to consider is the attitude with which um, they, they carry out their office. And I think the other challenge is that it's, it's, it's about adding value to others. Um, and I think one of the ways our leaders can add value to those um, that might be subordinate to them in a sense is by serving them. I, I remember what Jesus said, and I like what Paul said, Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Um, I won't read the whole thing this, this, this evening. But there's a part where Paul says that God, Jesus, being the very form of God, did not think equality with God as something to be grasped. Another translation says he didn't see it as something to be used to his advantage. 
And I think that is one of the things we can challenge all leaders about. That, yes, we may be in some leadership positions, but it is not necessarily to be used to your advantage. Mm -hmm. It is about serving others. Yeah. Oh, Bishop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just want to remind you of the scripture that I used last week yeah. with these two brothers who came with the request that they want a seat in Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my version of it. And my, my, it's very accurate right. because, by and large, their request was, when you come into your kingdom, when the new government is set up, the, the, the new uh, parliament, give me a seat. I want a seat in parliament. And that's what the representatives mm -hmm. are asking of you, to give me a chance to, be, to represent you in part. We talk about a seat. And we saw how Jesus responded and pay attention to Mark chapter 10 and verse 42 to 44. Because Jesus is um, saying to them, you know, not a bad request, but these are the requirements. And remember, we talk about the, the, the two other S. Right. That leadership is a sovereign assignment and leadership involves suffering. And from 42 to 44, Jesus said, Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Not so with you guys who are asking for a seat in parliament at all. Some other countries have those kind of leaders who lord it over people. Well, some people may say, I beg to disagree. They may say, well, there are some of them in St. Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus said, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. So you hear that? You hear what you're asking people for that seat? Mm -hmm. You are asking people to become their yes, servant. And whosoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. It's about servanthood. And I have followed the campaign. You know. I have listened when I had the time. I listened to both sides. And, oh, I hear all them candidates. How they will serve you. You, you, you get it? Uh, and some will say, well, you know, the other person won't, won't love you the way I love you. I will just serve you. <laughs> and uh, lovely. We, we, we love to hear that. And we are looking forward for whoever become, whoever get the seat, you will become the servant. But, but you notice that in the Bible, anywhere in the New Testament, it talks about leadership. You notice the Bible defines the, the, the mode of leadership. Well, it talks about in Ephesians 5, about husbands who are leaders of the family. You notice what it says, it defines the leadership is saying that the husband, men lead by serving. He gave himself for his wife. Wow. That is how Christ served the church. He paid the price. He gave himself. And we are expecting that those who win the seat will do just that. You are there to serve. Mm -hmm. Not like some others who lord it over people. You know, you're so humble now, but for the next five years, <laughs> when you're going to see your breeze, mm -hmm. and then after five years, you come back 
smiling with me again. Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen. Yeah, and, and honestly, you brought up a point there that I struggled with for years. I mean, you were not known living in the Grandines, and sometimes you you are here in St. Vincent, and a politician would pass you, and you say good morning, and he kept his head straight. But when it was close to elections, and he <laughs> said good morning, oh, <laughs> how are you? You know, <laughs> you know, it's it's just amazing that um, you know we we need to interact. Um, we need to be talking to people, and we cannot wait until it's election time to reach out to people. You know, a very good um, example is a um, person we must consider is Jesus. You know, um, <laughs> Jesus, when you think of, of um, his position, but yet still the, um, he was humble, you know, with regards to people, you know, what he did. You have um, the book of John chapter 13 from verse 12 with washing the feet of his disciples and it was a lowly job let's face it i mean think of it um in those days you wore sandals the roads were dusty and it was something servants would do you enter a house they would wash your feet and uh, you know peter was rejecting it you know <laughs> peter was saying look jesus no because of his view of the master but the master did this um, and he said, look, I'm setting an example for you to follow. And too often we get into positions and we, we try to lord it over people like I'm a boss and I'm over you. The way we talk to people, we talk down to them, you know, and that is not good at all. You know, we, we cannot adopt that approach. I'm here to serve. And the other side too, even though I'm here to serve, I'm not here to, you know, um, how I should I, I want to find a, a nice way to coin this but I'm not in a position just to waste or run down my energy because there are some things you have to look at there are some things you can get yourself involved in and you know I have often said it I don't know how politicians visit all these funerals <laughs> if you have 10 funerals they are the 10 funerals you know some of the things they have to do well i could understand that but at the same time you need relationship you have to be talking to people find out what's going on on the ground find out what we can do and even in the areas of poverty you have some people it's it's really 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 terrible what they're going through and so i need to be on the ground to interact and to know what is happening so that i can in turn in turn help people I wonder sometimes if as a as a human being the idea or the ideology of of being a servant is what is what is not very comfortable with us yeah. no, it's, um it's, and yeah. especially in, if you are in certain positions the, mm -hmm. to be called a servant sometimes to us as a as human being seems like people are it seems like a menial thing but it's really not according to the bible and from a biblical standard um, when you when you are a true servant, that is when you are really great. Yeah. And I, I think, um, I can't remember where I heard the phrase, but I remember hearing it several, several years ago that the higher you go, is the, the higher you go in terms of position and status in society, is the lower you must become in terms of your attitude and humility. And I think that is one of the challenges. I think it's very... It is not impossible, but it is a difficult challenge for people in positions to to take on the servant servant nature. But it is not impossible, and believe it or not, I think that is what is really needed. Because people can tell when you're arrogant and ignorant. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> when you when you're in a when you are lead and you you're arrogant and you're ignorant and you are you are stressing out people. People know. Yeah, people yeah, can tell. <laughs> And I, I, in in our case, in a political context, it's not just just that they are you know, our political leaders are servants of the people, but I think we also have to include the reality that beyond the people, they are responsible and accountable to God. Because I do believe um, that there could be times when what the people want is not necessarily what is the best thing for the nation. I, I believe that that there are some times when people could want some like certain policies or some things 
that may not be the best for the nation. Well, you have you have special interests that will try to invest in you, right? So that at the end of the day, they can get returns. But I just want to add this because I believe it the flaw to me is in our training. We hardly talk about serving people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think we believe our greatest accomplishment is when we get to a certain level in life, and that is it. And I'm expected to act and behave a certain way. You don't hear that part of, of serving people and how important humility is. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, even though I'm elevated, I'm the boss, I'm in charge, what about the contributions that many have made to you mm -hmm. get into that position as an individual. And I, I think these are the things when we are training leaders, these things must be factored in mm -hmm. to help people to understand the seriousness of it. So three things, and I'm responding to what you have said. In very important, uh, important thing. In that, think of, think of a tree. Mm -hmm. I have some sour sap trees. And when the sour sap tree is loaded, the branch bow lower. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the more power and authority that you have, the more education you have, and the more money you have, it should make you humbler, mm -hmm. not the other way. So notice that Jesus mm -hmm. is turning the table yes. of power. He gives power to the child mm -hmm. who is sometimes voiceless, nameless, and all of that. And he says, if you want to become great, you have to be like a child. And then the table waiter is given such recognition. If you want to be first, yeah. this is the how you start. You've got to be a servant. And the other issue of that servant does not presuppose weakness. We cannot, we cannot get it mixed up there. Right. So that mean, and if you, if you're humble, you yeah. know, you somehow or the other, See, you lack weak. confidence and you're weak and all. Of that. Lots of people have that, and and perhaps we're talking about servanthood, but some people have a different thing. Right. Yeah, different, different. Listen, I prefer to say to people, I will be a servant of God foremost mm -hmm. than a servant of people. Because if I am a servant of God, I will serve people well. Right. But you see, people, listen, man. I tell, I tell people, you, you understand? Remember, politicians must be governed by the law. Right. You have to function within a law, not really the fancy of your constituents. Mm -hmm. They can tell you and ask for things that are against the law. And I, I, I think sometimes we get in trouble there because... Believe it or not, you know, corruption could only flourish in a culture that is conducive for allows corruption, for that allows it, that fosters it. And I find sometimes too many of our people are too corrupt. <laughs> and out of the corruptness of our culture and our people come corrupt politicians because people demand it. It's like they love it. Mm -hmm. So, let's be careful of how you interpret this issue of servanthood. And then the issue of the, you, 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 you quoted um, John 13 of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And he said, I'm leaving you an example. This is the example. If your Lord could do this. And you know, one member came up with the idea of basin theology. You know, the basin <laughs> washing his feet. Said. Right. But but note that, you know, in the New Testament we see basin twice. Right. You remember that powerful politician uh, Pilate? Yes. When Pilate, who was a weak politician, who had the power to release Jesus, but you know he hide under the, under the guise, and then he washes his hands. He called call for a basin and wash his hands. You could always when, when you don't use your authority to promote justice and righteousness, you could wash your hands from now. History will remember you. History will not be kind with you. You have a choice. 
you have a choice. You either be a piler oh, who call for a basin to wash his hands off of his guilt because he should have acted and he didn't. Or you be like Jesus. And you wash your feet. Who washed the feet of his disciples. He served them. And I hope that whoever whoever get the seat in Parliament. <laughs> on Thursday. That the basin will be very symbolic of you washing the feet of the poor. Serving and be the voice of the voiceless. Remember the orphans and the widows. Those who don't have access to justice and health mm -hmm. and good education, that you bow down and you wash their feet. I think I said enough. I, I said I have three points. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's very important. That's why I said we have to get back to the place where we help people to understand what it's all about. I think too often we, we talk about the, um, the, the, the position and how you should act, how you should dress, how you should do this, how you should do the other. And a lot of people don't understand. It's, it's about you have to humble yourself because, okay, for the how many years you, we don't see you, you say certain things, you behave a certain way. And then now, when it's close to elections, you have to humble yourself, <laughs> you, you know? So it doesn't make sense. And as I said, these things have to be defined. We really, really have to help people to understand that. And also, gentlemen, even in our field, as pastors too, we have to understand the concept. It's one thing to preach a sermon and talk about we must be humble and follow Jesus, but it's another to be that way also. Matthew 20 and verse 26, Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be servant. your servant. And Mark chapter 9 and verse 35, And he sat down, called the twelve, and said unto them, If anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. And so we trust that what we have said here today, it has truly blessed your hearts. And uh, to me, that is the position we should take, even if we are not politicians, our lives, we should humble ourselves. And uh, always understand, you want to be great because that seemed to be the pulse. That seemed to be the heartbeat of some people. I want to be great. I want to leave uh, a mark on St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Well, if you want to do that, you've got to be a servant. All right? So on behalf of our General Bishop, um, Sonny Williams, and Reverend Ezra Cumberbatch, we want you to have a blessed evening. We have said a number of things. We trust you were, t you were taking notes. You have a lot to reflect on. And come November the 5th, come on, don't make excuses. I can't stand up. I can't this. I see people walk with chairs now <laughs> in, in little, um, what you call it, in, in whatever plastic, and they fold, oh, unfold it, yes. and they sit down. Let's go out there. Do what we have to do. And after this, let us move on as a country. God bless you. Have a great evening.